as bead populations dwindle and our agriculture may be on the chopping block. Because of that, uh, we have someone stepping in to help the world, robot bees. <laughs> Um, yeah, it may have looked like that very small drone was attacking the flower, but in fact, it was having sex with the flower, and... Uh, <laughs> So I don't know if I said that right. Uh, but in plant reproduction, there it's generally a three-party system. Yes, plants be having three ways uh, between uh, pollinators and then something, an intermediary. Usually it's a bee that is moving the pollen um, to another plant to pollinate it. So with the, I mean, we have a serious issue with bees dying off and a mm -hmm. lot of our crops not getting pollinated uh, or in danger of not being pollinated and um, what they've done is gotten these small quadcopters, yep. very tiny quadcopters connected with uh, horse hair on the bottom. So what's interesting about about this is like you said the clim climate change has been a, a affecting bees to the point where we actually had put our first bee species on the endangered species list a little while ago, mm -hmm. although then President Trump took it right off because he doesn't believe in that stuff. Bee populations are dying and like you said 90% of pollination that occurs, I mean this is fourth grade science here folks, male flower, female flower, and then a bee, bird, bat, butterfly, some winged creature using... Some bee word. Yeah, we'll take the pollen and move it from flower to flower and that's how uh, crops spread and obviously you know we do we, agriculture is a major major export uh, for this country still um, and uh, our economy is going to probably be affected if we don't keep our crops going and if we can't if the flowers can't pollinate themselves naturally then a lot of the crops are going to die off because they're not going to be able to not be able to spread mm -hmm. so when I first read the headline, I admit I was terrified because I'm like, I can think of all the bad robot bees. I'm like, oh, this sounds like a bad sci-fi movie. We're all going to get stung to death. We're all doomed. <laughs> but then um, obviously this is, it's not I technically I mean, they didn't bees. install a robot stinger. Yes. Yet. That, yet. Yet. <laughs> um, but fortunately, yeah, it's just small drones that they want to use. And as if you saw the Super Bowl halftime show, you can pr uh, program drones to do amazing things. Mm -hmm. um, and they can tr then program these drones to replace the bees that have been lost to crop dust these fields for them, basically. Yeah. I mean, and it's it, it's it's a shame though that we've gotten to the point where nature we nature's too far gone that we have to step in now because we messed it up so bad to begin with that the bees are dying off that with insecticides and with mm -hmm. climate change and all this other stuff. Um, I mean, look, there's always going to be an ebb and flow in terms of ecosystems and stuff, especially as you know the the earth does have natural patterns, but. We've definitely accelerated a lot of these things, and now to the point where we're at, where crops are dying mm -hmm. left and right because the bees are dead. Um, I definitely think this is something that it's a shame that we've gotten to this point. But thank goodness somebody, uh, I believe in Japan, has stepped up and and uh, yes. figured out a solution. Uh, this research is currently being conducted in Japan. Um, it's being led by senior author Ehiro Miyako, a scientist, uh, a chemist at the National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology in Japan. And what's interesting is he helped make this gel that uh, the sticky gel that's on the bottom of the horse hairs on the drone that attaches to the pollen. Um, kind of on accident. So what he had done was made this gel that should conduct electricity uh, 10 years ago and then he refound the gel and realized oh my gosh the viscosity is still the same it's still sticky and it's really good at collecting dust why don't we apply it this way and that's where the gel came from. It yeah. may be mildly uh, conductive as well uh, <laughs> thanks to the other research going on. Um, and uh, this is, I mean, you're not going to see this flying over your crops imminently, but it's definitely an, an option that can be used. I know a while back Harvard was working on um, some similar level of uh, robotic bee. They do look more insect-like <laughs> and uh, instead of a, a tiny drone. Those are the ones that sting us to death. I, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, they could get caught in our grills of our cars maybe. <laughs> I, don't know. I also don't think those have electric stingers because um, I mean, I don't want to start a micro robot war, but it sounds too badass not to, so let's start a micro robot war. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's it's cool that they're working on this. Each drone has a retail value of one hundred dollars, so we might need to wait a little bit for uh, this to be more of an economically viable option to pollinate crops. Audience, 
Would you like to see some robot bees out in the wild one day? Please don't shoot them. They're $100 each. Uh, let us know what you think below in the comments, and please like and subscribe for more.